Hey there golfers, I'm Drew Mahola, Second Swing Golf. I'm joined by Thomas Campbell, a master club fitter here at Second Swing. And today we've got some new irons for 2021. The Ping G425, falling into that game improvement category, uh, should fit a wide range of golfers out there. Uh, they've been built to add distance, add launch, add forgiveness. Uh, Thomas Ping G irons have been fantastic. Uh, you know, talk about G400, G410. Now the G425 series kind of combines what's been in those irons, but then they've added a couple new things. They've changed a couple things. Uh, these look fantastic, and I would imagine the, the performance here will be awesome. Yeah, you mentioned the Ping G line in general has just performed really well over the last few years. So I'm always excited when Ping introduces their next series. So the G425, I'm definitely expecting this to still go pretty far. So mm -hmm. the, the lofts aren't super jacked, but you mentioned the variable face thickness on the yeah. irons. So that definitely is going to generate a little bit more ball speed yeah. off an iron that is maybe not completely super game improvement. Yeah, yeah. I think that's where, you know, you see, you know, huge iron distances out there. And a lot of that's because the loft is jacked up. You know, you got a seven iron at like 27 degrees loft. These ones are, I mean, it's still stronger than maybe normal or, or traditional, but it's not kind of as radical, so to speak. So. Pings, uh, in terms of both the appearance, right? It's not a super large, clunky appearance. And also the loss are staying somewhat traditional. So they're kind of trying to stay there. But with that said, they provide the distance. They provide the launch and the forgiveness through a bunch of different technologies that we'll talk about. So today we've got the wedge, uh, I guess the pitching wedge, the seven iron and the four iron. And Thomas is going to kind of hit some shots. We're just going to discuss Thomas's feedback and kind of what we see on track, man. Um, I'm interested in this because I know the fitters have always been giving me, you know, whether it's you or any of the fitters at um, any of the stores, give high praise, super high praise for the Ping G irons out there. So uh, I'm excited for this one. Yeah, so speaking of fitting, so today we're going to be testing with the True Tamper Dynamic Gold S300. But it's important to come in and get fit, talk with the fitter about what particular golf shaft that you should be playing in the G425 mm -hmm. irons. We're going to hit five shots with each club head. Uh, so this is, I mentioned, the stock standard black dot True Tamper Dynamic Gold S300 golf shaft. I'm excited to just kind of see the performance differences between the 4, 7, and pitching wedge. Before I do that, I do ask if you haven't done so, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We love getting your comments and feedback, so if you could do that as well, we really appreciate it. And we've got some other great content coming your way in the future. Thomas, I'm excited for this. Let's get after it. Let's do it. Okay, Thomas, you've got the pitching wedge of the G425 irons uh, at 44 and a half degrees, I believe. That's correct. Yep. Yep. So 44 and a half degrees. So that's kind of where does that fit into maybe iron sets today and their pitching wedges? So, game improvement iron pitching wedges. There's a range. They some of them get close to 40 degrees. So 40 to 44, 45 is okay. kind of the the area. So it's still kind of towards the, the higher end of game improvement yeah. irons. Maybe it's still a little bit more traditional with the lofts. Yeah, a little think, bit. Yeah, something like that. A more traditional loft for a pitching wedge these, this day is probably 46 to 47 okay. is more. That's a really old loft. school pitching wedge loft, right? Uh, yeah. But this is, it's still hanging around that more traditional side for ping. They're not going all the way to kind of the extremes that you're seeing somewhere else maybe in the industry where you get like a, a seven iron, for example, at like 26 degrees. Uh, but you got the pitching wedge there. Um, what do you think about that? Just looking down at it, what do you think about the appearance that it gives you? Is it does it scream like max game improvement? Is it super thick? What do you see? I, mean, I know this is uh, brand new and it's been hit before, so it looks clean, very very crisp, <laughs> right? Clean. Um, so I, I love it's still got that kind of that white bottom line to help with, with, with alignment, club mm -hmm. head alignment there too. But it's, it's not super oversized, I believe. The head's just been slightly trimmed from heel to toe. Yep. So it definitely looks a little bit sleeker versus some other kind of game improvement irons. Uh, still got their traditional, you know, G G line soles on the on the yeah. on the club, so to help for regards to forgiveness and, and turf interaction that, yeah. that they're through the ball. But it's not max oversized game improvement by all means. It's just yeah. it's a good looking club with some good hidden technology behind mm -hmm. it. Yeah. yeah. So I think one thing as as we hit shots here, we'll talk a little bit more about that technology, but. Um, I mean, they had a new club face in there. They've kind of, like you said, they tweaked the shape a little bit. So we'll see how it performs here. We'll hit, you know, we got the pitching wedge, we got the seven iron, and we got the four iron here. So sounds good.
Thomas, first of all, what is the pitching wedge kind of that you, uh, the loft on uh, the pitching wedge that you're playing? And based on that, what would you expect maybe this to travel? So my loft on my pitching wedge is like 47 degrees. Okay. And that usually for me is about 138 to 140 carry okay. distance. So should expect more distance from a stronger would, lofted pitch yeah. wedge here. Expect a little more, more distance out of this. I'd also expect a little bit less spin out of this yes. too. My pitching wedge spins around about 9,000, where we noticed the first shot there was about 6,700. Yeah. Okay. So. Now with a wedge, you're not, you know, you're not aiming to curve the ball as much, but I have noticed a little bit of a draw there. Just a, just a just slight a little bit. bit of draw. I won't probably see as much of a draw with this compared to my blades that right. I play. Not gonna be turning over as much, but pretty straight overall, I would guess. Mm -hmm. And one of the things about the wedges in particular with the G425 iron set, so this would be your pitching wedge, kind of what they call a utility wedge. And then, you know, depending on what you get with your set, a sand wedge or lob wedge, the grooves are kind of precision milled like a traditional wedge that maybe like, for example, ping like the glide wedges. They're, the grooves are kind of machined in there the same way to give that control. So that does add an, an, another element of, um, again, I, I, the, the control for your scoring clubs that you would find in this set, which is something that, you know, they're, you're seeing that more and more now with iron sets where you kind of, the shorter irons, more control. Uh, like in this case, the, the grooves are machine milled like wedges, but then you get up farther in the set and then you, it's more of your forgiveness uh, characteristics are built in. Yeah, that's very important because your wedges, they're your scoring clubs. You yeah. want a valve to feel like you can control them, feel like you can control the spin and get the ball to stop maybe a little bit faster right. around the green, mm -hmm. and generate some good feel. So I for sure, the way the grooves have been designed is going to present that for mm -hmm. players. Mm -hmm. For sure. Full speed dropped there by about five miles an hour, but carry distance only dropped by about five mm -hmm. yards. So yeah, kind of a big difference there was the forgiveness level. Yeah. yeah. If this was my blade and I had missed it like that, <laughs> probably would have gone 15 yards shorter. Maybe the, uh, the hazard short of the green or something, <laughs> but uh, that one carried out of the green. Yep. Well, that was a better swing. All right, so that was five swings with the pitching wedge, you can bring up this dispersion quickly here and then maybe bring up these numbers alongside it. Um, that is a pretty small circle out there, I think. And, you know, the, the, like you said, the spin's a little bit uh, lower than maybe what you would expect out of your pitching wedge. Yep. But of course, these are, you know, the game improvement irons, stronger loss, kind of, and kind of built for lower spin and distance versus, you know, a traditional wedge. But, um, you know, you've hit five with the wedge, what do you think? They're not like super game, game improver and lower lofted wedges either. So yeah. I have done some testing that I've done. I've definitely had some pits and pitching wedges that easily carry over 150. Mm -hmm. this, this time around, my average is like 145. So you want to have good gapping yeah. with, with your clubs there as well. One other thing to keep in mind too is Ping offers two other different options with their lofts. So you got the power spec. Mm. You got the power spec where it's kind of one to two degrees yeah. stronger. Or you've got the more traditional, what's that called? Yeah, you got the retro spec yeah. here. So you got the more retro spec on, on, on the, on the, as well. So if you wanted to have more traditional lofts, you could do that, but also get forgiveness out of the club, so which is kind of a, a unique thing to do yeah. with uh, that ping offers there as well. So that's, a, that's an important note because I think um, iron lofts are becoming a very hot topic. You know, the, the seven iron is going from, you know, 35 degrees to 26 degrees and people, uh, a new, uh, nowadays a game of iron in a seven is like a, a traditional six or five. And so it's become a hot topic and a lot of people prefer the traditional. Some people want to get that more distance out of a seven iron with the higher or the lower loss, excuse me. So um, that is a, a, a great option from Ping there, that nice little feature that they can give you. But we've got the standard 44 and a half degree pitching wedge. What do you think about these numbers, Thomas? I mean, is there anything major takeaway? There certainly aren't any concerns with that. Yeah, spin around about 7,000 on a wedge that's got 44 and a half degrees of loft on it. It's probably pretty close. For me, I knowing that I don't usually spin the ball a, a, a high amount. Yeah. So it's a good option for a player that maybe has a steeper attack angle that spins the ball a little more to bring that spin rate down a little mm -hmm. bit. 
Still hit the bull fairly high in the air. I think it was about 100, 110 feet in the air on, on average. The last shot I hit was 108. So still got plenty of stopping power with a steep landing angle. Yeah. It's the important thing to note with these wedges. They're going to get up in the air and they're going to stop for you as right. well. So. Plus, I mean, they're going to stop A because they're getting the ball launched in the air and they're going to land with a steep landing angle, but also B, those grooves that we talked about too, are also going to help that uh, when, with, at least with the pitching wedge going to the green. So um, now we can go to the seven iron here. And uh, we'll, I'm sure we'll see some changes in the shaping, of course, with the loft. But then the shape is, as I say, gradually moving up. A little bit more forgiveness packed in there. So I'm sure you'll see some of that. All right, let's take a look. Come on. It's pretty <laughs> close, close, though. Thomas, your first shot, you just carried that 200 yards with the, uh, with the seven iron. Now... I, most golfers don't need to be carrying with 7 or 200 yards. And the point here is Thomas's swing is so repeatable that we'd like to have Thomas test out irons like this to really test performance. That is a hot 7 iron. Uh, and you now they've made a new uh, club face with the irons this year compared to G410, G400. It's a you know wo metal wood style club face, variable face thickness, right, that you'd see in like a three wood. Yep. Um, and that is going to produce higher numbers of distance and ball speed, uh, improve that face flexing. So I think, I mean, this is only one shot, but that is, that's a pretty good start. I think that technology is a way that ping can get away with a little bit more ball speed off the face, but not having to have that 26, that 27 yeah. degree seven yeah. iron. It's 30, 30 degree seven iron. So it's not like it's super jacked up right. in, in regards to some other game improvement seven irons out there. Right. Um, but it's yeah, good numbers right across the board right there. I love the fact that that one landing angle was close to 50 degrees, so it's still fairly mm -hmm. high. Still got that plenty of stopping yep. power because it was flying nice and high. Yeah, you got that 116 feet in the air. That's now. What do you think about the, you know, the shaping at address? What does that seven iron look like to you? I mean, after especially after maybe hitting the the wedge and it looks like maybe you have the G410 there. Yeah, I have the G410 here as well. I was kind of looking at the kind of differences between the two of them there. One thing I you can Notice just a little bit, it's pretty subtle, but I talked about that heel to toe. Yeah. So the seven iron, I noticed it a little bit more. It's slightly smaller, sleeker kind of look, heel to toe. Yeah. Um, and we're talking pretty similar look on the, on the sole with, with, these, with these two. Say top line, top line maybe just a little bit, little bit sleeker, but I can maybe notice a little bit more of that heel to toe yeah. with there. So it's just slightly closer together. But yeah, it's, it's a good looking, good looking club. And the ping, like the, the G line, it's performed so well for yeah. me in fittings across the board. Like if I've got a player that needs a little bit of help, game improvement, the ping G line has just been so good. And the go-to? Go on, go on, go-to. It's always kind of like that, that go-to yeah. for sure. Uh, I, remember, I always like to put in the mix. Right, and I remember the G400 line was, um, a, it, it kind of was surpri like I wanted to say surprisingly like thick, but it was a little bit larger club head, and I think it was easy to tell right away that okay, this has a lot of forgiveness packed in there, easy high launch, and it performed that way. But I think the last couple of models they've done a really good job of keeping that forgiveness in there and the high launch, but kind of decreasing the size of the club head. It's not as clunky, so to speak, as a G400, and it shows. I mean, you get the performance, you get the distance, but it's very, I think, a lot you know, better to look at that address. Yeah, it clean, uh, we've talked about with the drivers as well, we've looked at ping, they clean kind of that, mm -hmm. not as much color going on, kind of like that. Right. Um, you look at the, the old G410 where it's got the, the red and the, yeah. the black and the, the white and everything. This has kind of got just kind of the black and the white. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of pretty clean looking, looking down there as well. And in the uh, shop, you'll notice a big difference, probably nice clean look. Yeah. Um, so it's a good looking club. Yeah, definitely a good looking club. Not like, I'm not saying it's way different compared to the G410, but there's just, just very subtle differences. Yeah, well that's the nice, I mean, that's golfing nerds, right? I mean, golf geeks, golf nerds, notice the subtle differences out there. There are some that do and some that don't. Yeah. But G, G425 looks pretty darn good. Yeah, I mean, also keep in mind if I was ping, I probably wouldn't change up too much. <laughs> they're, they're, they're G, I've said it before, their G line is yeah. uh, oh, exceptionally yeah. good, so yeah. it performs well. So, Absolutely. Uh, I mean, that's, it's been popular. I, that's the first thing I've been recommending to my friends that you know maybe need an iron set, need something, game improvement. 
G410 has been the recommendation the last couple of years, and then G400 before that, so it's, it's a winner. Yeah. Well, let's hit a few more. Seven iron. See if I can get around about that 200 yard carry again, I guess. That's so far left. <laughs> is it though? Well, is it though? <laughs> I didn't, that didn't so sound yeah. pure. Uh, I think you maybe missed hit a tad on that one. That was one, not right? hit very well. Yeah. <laughs> So your last shot that you thought you hit pretty well, right? The last yep. shot? First shot was good. This one I did not was, hit very well. Okay, so that last one was 200 yards on the dot carry. This is 199.3. So <laughs> your miss hit, you lost a big yeah. seven tenths of a yard. Well, you would notice the spin rate drop. I call that just a little bit on the, on the toll. Um, spin rate dropped a little bit compared to the shot before. Height yeah. went down a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. But considering it's a miss hit, like you mentioned, that carry distance, that's important. Right. So if it was me, I would say that was a, that was a terrible swing. <laughs> It, w it was to me, but yeah. uh, got away with it. Yeah, that's forgiveness. We can, yeah, that is the <laughs> forgiveness personified in this club. You, 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 you felt like that was a pretty darn bad swing. You didn't hit the center. You hit it the same distance. That was better. That was a lot of ball speed. Yeah, that was. So, a little bit more club speed on that one. But that height was up there again in the high, high 110s and the landing angle about 48 again. So yeah. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a good model. It's so we talked about the forgiveness on the last shot. Yep. Um, the, the, the new shape, right? So they, they shrunk it a tad from heel to toe. And then they, that extra savings and weight, they moved to the heel and the toe weights that are kind of in there. So that's ever so slightly added to perimeter, perimeter weighting. Um, so maybe that contributed a little bit to that forgiveness there. And then, of course, that's also contributing to high launch and the ball speed as well. Yeah, so even though it might be in a ever so slightly small package, I believe that there's 3% higher MRI on this particular yeah. model. So we noticed that on the second shot. And the third shot, I jumped on a little bit more you and got back it. to what <laughs> I want to see there. But right. yeah, so it's not going as far as some of like those 26, 27 degree yeah. seven irons that I've hit in testing. But once again, you've got to pay attention to that landing angle. So that's the important thing yeah. with the irons. It keeps up with way less loft. I mean, that, those yeah. are good numbers. They're good numbers. Another good swing there. Should be pretty straight. A little bit of curve to the right, but Maybe right around about that 200 yeah. mark again. Club face just a tad open, a couple yep. degrees. But Now, what do you think about the feel? It's solid off the off the face. It's, you know, it's definitely got the the ping staple cast feel mm -hmm. to it. Um, now it's not forged by by all means, right. but it's not doesn't feel like it's harsh on the hands either. So mm -hmm. it's forgiving. It's you know, it's not going to get beat up in your bag. It's not going right. to you know rattle around and get beat up for sure. Um, it's going to retain its its look for a while. So mm -hmm. it's, and it's taking all that look there as well. It does have still has that hydro pearl. Finish. Um, finish to it as well. So that's going to help to repel the water. Yep. yep. And then uh, I was going to mention the ping's been good about putting different materials in the cavity of the iron. And so like you go back to G400, they had that kind of rubber on it. G410, they added some different things. And now they've got, if you look in the cavity kind of feel, um, there's some different kind of dampening materials to, you know, it's not going to feel like a harsh cast iron. Yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely it's not forged, like you said, yep. but it, it feels pretty good for a cast for you know, game improvement iron. Yeah, it feels good. It feels, that's uh, kind of what I would expect from a game improvement iron, mm -hmm. but it's, it's definitely firmer feeling irons right. out there. Right, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Another solid swing. Landing angle around about 48 again. That's been the consistent thing, is minus that one that I pulled a little bit, that yeah. landing angle, and those good shots was right around about 48 degrees, which mm -hmm. is plenty for a club. Now, keep in mind, this model probably doesn't fit into a player that maybe has a higher swing speed as I, so that landing angle would drop a little bit yeah. for a player that doesn't swing as fast, but there's potential there. Mm -hmm. Definitely potential there to give some stopping power. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you look at these circles here and you see the consistency, right, distance-wise for one. Um, you can see the one here that you kind of tugged a tad and there's the landing angle drop into 43, but then you, know, you click on the rest of these and you got 48, 48, 48, and then there's a 51 that maybe had the open club face, but yep. uh, so I an mean, average about 48. Right, yep. and then yep. I mean you can again. You really said you missed this one. 
<laughs> and it's still up there. Still so carry, still carry the average distance to what I was hitting this club. Right, exactly. I mean, you, your average carry was 201. That, I think that club carried like 200. So, um, yeah, I mean, what do you, you know, after hitting 700 pitching wedge now, what I guess is your, your new summary of the irons before we get to the four iron? Once again, Pings uh, kind of just nailed it again with their, their G line. The G line for me in the past has done so well in fittings. Yeah. I'm fully confident the Ping G425 is going to mm -hmm. keep continuing to perform really well across the board. So that's yeah. probably the biggest thing that I kind of notice here is yeah. looks still looks very, very good. Um, ever so ever so slightly smaller from kind of heel to toe. But performance wise, mm -hmm. it's kind of what I'd expect out of the Ping. G yeah. line. I know our yeah. fitters have really given high praise for the G, you know, 400, 410 irons in their fittings recently. So uh, now we can get to the four iron here and see how that thing stacks up. Maybe it's a potential driving iron in the bag for Thomas Campbell. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I always love um, uh, testing the game improvement four irons because yeah. I'm always like, oh, I'll try to find that driving iron in there. Yeah. So. Oh, that's a rocket. Oh, that was pretty low spin there. That's a laser. Well, it, did, it did get up there at 86 feet. It seems like that was almost like a, you know, your chaser off the tee type shot. Yeah. Might have been it, slightly on the toe, that little lower yeah. shot there again. So now this four iron is at, what, well, we got 20 and a half degrees in the standard specs. So, I mean, that's certainly uh, stronger than your traditional set, but it's not egregious to 18 degrees that we've kind of seen where some of these are. Uh, I, don't, I don't want to say egregious. I mean, that's just, <laughs> that's, the, that's the transition that's the that is being made now, right? Yep. Where the, the trend is to get things as strong as possible to increase that distance while still being able to launch the ball in the air. Uh, what do you think so far after two shots? Um, and does this kind of line up with maybe what you'd expect out of a 20 and a half degree iron? So far, I maybe haven't hit those first two perfect. We noticed the height and the landing angle drop just a little bit. Mm -hmm. So it was more of a, a chaser, so yeah. kind of that driving iron kind of play that I'd like to off, off the tee as opposed to hitting into a, a green. So it's important to note, keep that in mind when you're get working with a club fitter, because yeah. my club speed is a little bit faster. Yeah. I can get away with it, so I still have a stop and power because I'm still able to generate the height from the yeah. speed. But if you're seeing that landing angle, that height being lower with less club speed, mm -hmm it's not going to stop as fast. And that's where it gets a little bit challenging. Right. And that's when you sacrifice kind of a little bit of distance there, the distance there as well. That's but where I you talk about the transition to a hybrid. Exactly. You know, like a yep. G425 hybrid, for example, yep. where if that, you know, you're not able to hold the green when you land on it, that's where you make that transition is what you're referring to here. Yeah. Just because Ping offers a G425 four iron with their, with their set, doesn't yeah. mean you have to play the four iron. Mm -hmm. As they've got their, their hybrids out there as well that will help to help make a good transition through the rest of your bag there as well yeah. to keep that height up and give you that stop and power. Yep. Keep that ball speed up on those particular clubs right. there as well. Yep. So that's why it's important. You don't have to just get the four iron through pitching wedge set. You could start at a five, you could start at a six, mm -hmm. you play the hybrid, it's all. Go six fun. through gap wedge or yep. something like that. You know, It doesn't have to be four through pitch. Um, but yeah, I, I think that's something that's really important to remember because you know, I'm sure you see all the time in fittings, right? Where someone comes in and they're wondering, well, I can't you know, hit my forearm very well. And it's because you don't need one. You need a hybrid mm -hmm. to launch the ball a little higher. And that's going to be the better, A, for gapping, but B, just for that, you know, maybe it's 210 yards is what you need that club for. Yeah. That's the better option for you. Yeah, and too often I see that. I see that way too often that players come in and they're like, oh, find me a better forearm. I'm like, well, I'm, I'm sorry, we might want to just have to consider a hybrid mm -hmm. or even maybe like, like a crossover or something. Yeah just to give you a little extra height and a little bit less yeah. more spin. Mm -hmm. Now, the way I play, I generate enough speed. I'm not the highest spinner by all means, so this is always gonna be kind of a little lower spin. I've gotta be able to work the ball, so I've gotta try and hit that little bit of a fade. Maybe I'll do that next. Maybe this next shot, I'll try and hit a little yeah, higher sure. one where I try and reduce that carry to total difference, because that yeah. last shot was 20 yards. So that's 238 going 258. Yeah. So I'm a good work. I'm able to work the ball into the green by hitting it a little higher. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, let's so. see what you got, huh? Sounds good. Maybe hit a fade here. Oh, let's try to hit a little, little higher fade. Oh yeah. Oh, so that one there. Look at that. I was able to get that height back over 100 feet in the air. Yeah. I and mean, not not every player is able to just jump up here and work the ball right. left to right, right to left. That's why you know a hybrid just in general mm -hmm. might be just a good option. Yeah. 
But these clubs are workable as well, so we're showing the workability. Right, and this is so. This is a, a, an interesting kind of topic that um, I think we've discussed before. But the idea of maybe a player's iron, you know, someone that plays a player's iron, uh, but at the top of the set, maybe you want something a little more forgiving. G425, for example, um, where you could still work the ball a little bit, could keep the ball at your, you know, at what you want for height wise, shape your, put your fade in there on a 230 yard shot. This looks like a good example here. That was a barely over 3,500 spin. Um, it's a good looking shot there, and you can do it on a command. I mean, this is Thomas Campbell, of course. That's different than the average golfer, but that's a pretty good looking shot. And the fact that this club can do all those things while in a game improvement package is, is impressive. I mean, it's the great thing I like about it is that carry distance has been very, very consistent across the board mm -hmm. there, too. So we're talking. I think it was like 236, 235, 235. Yeah. We switched I mean, that to carry distance. Oh yeah, we're going to carry here. You can Look see kind of, like, kind of <laughs> across the board there as well there. The last one was like 233, I think. So that's because it was you know, flying yeah. higher. But that one, I got that landing angle over 45 degrees, which is definitely kind of an important yeah. uh, topic to and height back up there as well by shaping it in there too. So. Right. Yeah, that's, you know, if you can keep that, those numbers relatively consistent with the landing angle and the height, that means you're still, you know, playing the right set there, or right club there at that part of your bag. So, yep. but I tell you, this club looks pretty fantastic right now. Yep. I mean, the set in general, the G425 irons, you're able to do what you want. And I know you don't, I mean, for your sake as a, you know, a professional golfer and someone who swings like you do, don't need to be hitting seven iron 200 yards. Uh, for gapping purposes, but you're able to hit the shot shapes and trajectories that you would like, right? Yeah. So you mentioned driving iron, potential candidate. Well, why don't we finish off this last swing where I just try and hit something a little lower, yeah, penetrate, and see kind of how, how well it performs. So you're going to change your swing a tad, but the idea here is to kind of keep it low, you know, under 100 feet, let it roll out there. Yep. Kind of maybe like your first couple of swings kind of yes. ends up like that. Similar to the first couple of swings, maybe a little lower. There we go. Yeah. 85 feet in the air. Sign me up for that off the <laughs> tee. We've got a bunker out there about 270 that I got to stay short of or a hazard. Mm -hmm. That was pretty good. That was, that was excellent there. Yeah, I smoked that. <laughs> I crushed that shot. That was smoked. Yeah. Um, and that's the night. And again, the workability, versatility of that. The, the club's up in this set. And then you can talk about, you know, uh, like I said, using a four iron as a utility type club in your bag is an op another option that I don't think a lot of golfers consider when they play maybe a player's distance or maybe they play a player's type iron. Yep. But it's another option, of course. But again, I, it plays just as well as, I, as a you know, regular four iron in your set. You can hit all the shots you need to. It provides, provides the forgiveness, launches the ball in the air. Mm -hmm. And I, it, I'm, I'm very impressed. This I'm very four impressed. iron is hot really hot it's, yeah yeah and the consistency is there too I mean I it's awesome it's yeah. awesome all right so Thomas I think the the verdict here is any golfer in the market looking for a little more forgiveness maybe a little bit more ball speed maybe a higher launch from their irons g425 for 2021 seems like a really really good candidate for that player yeah definitely ball speed but not in so much of a, a jacked loft experience right so 30 degree seven iron for me was the biggest takeaway is I still, for me, I've done a lot of testing with irons from the super game improvement iron all the way up to yeah. the blades. Still carried this thing over 200 yards. For, for, for me as a player, I for sure wouldn't want to carry the ball seven, yeah. seven iron 200 yards, but it's just showing how hot this club face is yeah. considering it's only still got 30 degrees loft right. on it. And it's a pretty compact, like, it's not, it doesn't look like your, you know, oversized game improvement iron that uh, seems to be the trend nowadays. It still is compact. It's pleasing to look at, yep. and it gives you all the performance that you know you're looking for. So, uh, again, super impressive results here for the G425 irons. I think you're going to be fitting a lot of players into these irons uh, in 2021 and beyond too. Uh, I think this will be a long-lasting, really good product out there. So, uh, one more thing too, we should remind golfers: if they want to get fit for G425 irons, they can trade in their old irons into uh, using the Second Swing Value Guide highest values in the industry for trades. 
and um, you know you'll get a nice little kind of discount, so to speak, on your upgrade to the G425 irons. So um, yeah, Thomas, this was a great test. I think Ping did a you know hit these out of the park, the G425 irons. They always do, and they're going to do it again with G425.